Welcome to Mohobe Nuggets of Wisdom podcast. My name is Mumpulu Giluruma Mohobe. Our objective is to enthuse, inspire, energize, and empower entrepreneurs and entrepreneurs of all stripes here in BW and beyond. We do so by inviting these entrepreneurs and entrepreneurs into our makeshift studio. Sometimes we call them to the restaurant, sometimes we go uh, to our studio and we ask them to share their experiential knowledge, their experiences and their expertise. And we ask them uh, as many questions as we can aimed at empowering you also as a viewer. Hello dear viewer and listener, uh, welcome to another episode of Mohobe Nuggets of Wisdom podcast. I'm so excited, I'm so invigorated about this particular episode uh, and I would really urge you to subscribe, please. I really would be glad if you subscribe. I have yet another guest who's going to share life-changing business education on entrepreneurship and his name is Neil Whitson, but I prefer that my guests introduce themselves. Welcome to the studio, sir. Thank you very much. And uh, firstly, I'd like to thank you very much for inviting me onto your show. And uh, I've been watching and following you. Mm -hmm. And I'm very, very impressed and uh, mm -hmm. happy to see such a show taking place. Thank and, you very and, much. And your efforts and, and even yourself. And I, I even feel a little bit intimidated because <laughs> I'm just a small guy, but uh, I'm on a big show. Thank you, thank so you. Thank you so much. Uh, right. My name is Neil Whitson. Um, uh, I have a small business uh, in uh, Khaburoni West called Neil's Feed and Fodder. Mm -hmm. And I pride myself and try my best to source and bring in the best quality feeds that I can for our farming community mm -hmm. and uh, try to to bring in the most affordable solutions for them. Okay. So that's, that's, that's our goal and our drive so far. Wow. Yeah. On the academic side, uh, what's the background, school and so on? Uh, on the be uh, academic back, uh, background, I'm, um, I'm a professional guide. Uh, I never completed school uh, due to uh, I had a quite a serious injury and I couldn't really finish. I did repeat a year or two. Mm. Um, so yeah, but I, I did do some some studies in transport and logistics and so forth after that. Mm -hmm. uh, but I came to a point where I, I couldn't anymore. Mm -hmm. I went to my father and I told him I'm done. Mm. And uh, and his words to me were very good. If you're done, you're not going to lie on the couch mm -hmm. in the house. Mm -hmm. I will allow you to be done, but you need to to get up and go do something and make a living one way or another and you never to to hold me liable that I never pushed you to finish but because he gave you the opportunity he gave me the opportunity but he did agree that that I was done because mm. I, had, I had repeated and I had tried my best but yeah I get the I get the impression that your dad was a very powerful influence in your life my father was the most powerful uh, together with my mother my mother was the one who entertained all my silly ideas mm. and she she motivated them uh, i would start all sorts of funny little businesses and she would help me and mm. she would encourage me and she would even go as far as to help me drive around and do these things mm. and uh we we always thought that my father didn't know um, <laughs> i can give you an example at the age of uh, 14 i started a garden service cleaning people's gardens and uh, asking the lawnmower and yeah and uh, so I used to sneak out the, the lawnmower mm -hmm. and push it all over the, the neighborhood and cut people's grass for the five five uh, pula five pula mm. everywhere mm. and then coming on Saturday when my father decided to mow his own lawn mm -hmm. uh, he found that the machine's wheels were finished <laughs> the winder was finished mm. he never said anything he just quietly repaired them and, mm. and he always mumbled that the machinery seems to be of bad quality. <laughs> yeah. Meantime, I had pushed it kilometers, but mm, mm. later on in, in my life, I learned that he knew about it. <laughs> he just helped us. What's yeah. the lesson that you learned from that? The lesson I learned from that was, uh, if you want something, you know, I was came from a family of uh, four boys. Mm -hmm. So the competition was rife and I was the third one. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, 
it motivated me to the things that I wanted. Mm. My father and mother encouraged us to learn the fact that if you need that thing, you need to work for it. You need mm. to make a plan. Mm -hmm. It's not going to fall out of the sky. Mm. Mm. And uh, and that's that sparked those little ideas of God and service. Mm. And, uh, deliver newspapers. I started a little newspaper. And then I just uh, started a little business of uh, delivering fresh croissants on a Sunday morning to everybody together with a newspaper. Yes. And I slowly thought of more things and I added more to the basket. And mm. I was doing those things years ago. Mm. And, and now it's a big business, Mr. Delivery and all of that. Yeah, but yeah. To be honest, I was doing them <laughs> many, decades many years ago. ago. Yeah, yeah. 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 And, uh. and, and people that know me know that. Yeah, there's a, there's a handful of people still mm. uh, that remember me as the the young man with the lawnmower. Let's talk about starting a new business from scratch. Share your little back your, your background. Well, what happened there is uh, I came to Botswana to work at Mokolodi Nature Reserve with my wildlife experience and, mm. and uh, my logistics and mechanical knowledge. Yeah. Um, I also um, I'm very good on mechanics, so mm. I took over that part of things. And I had a 12-year uh, most beautiful career that one can ever ask for. In Mokolodi? In Mokolodi Nature Reserve. What were you doing for them, just briefly, and before we uh, go to that? I started there as an operation manager, mm -hmm. and I worked myself up eventually to become the park manager. Mm -hmm. And uh, I had the most uh, beautiful life and experiences. I met President Bush, I met President Clinton, mm. I met both the princes. Mm. Uh, we, we, we developed Mokolodi from a small starting project uh, together with uh, uh, Rapuso's son, Diapuso, mm -hmm. Kebi. Yes. And he was inspirational in my life. You mean, we, you mean Judge Kebi, former, judge, uh, you know, former ju judge, Kebi's, judge of the Court of Appeal? Judge uh, Court of Appeal, uh, Judge Kirby, his son Biopuso, uh, at that time was the park manager and I became the operations manager and we formed a very, very nice uh, bond mm. yes. and team and we, uh, uh, I'm going off the subject a little bit. No, sorry, it's fine. But, Just this but, but it will lead to a, to answer your question. Yeah. And um, uh, Biopuso was also a very, very instrumental man in village development and community and Mokolori was was uh, very instrumental in employing the whole Mokolodi village and mm. building this dream of environmental education and teaching the children of Botswana wow. uh, environmental education and what we have and what we can show our children one day. Yes. So I was part of that. And mm. I mean, what, what a privilege. And yes. it happened. And, and, and I grew with that and I learned the Botswana culture and I learned the... Uh, how a village operates, and I learned other projects. Because the Western are getting up. Yeah, you're learning the the oh, language. Hundred percent. Why is it Western? Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, so, yeah. and then from then, uh, you know, it came to a point where both of us, Biopuso mm. and myself, mm. eventually we had our children. Yes. And being a charitable organisation, and the salaries were very low, it became. Difficult. Uh, very difficult to sustain a family, mm. to be fair. Yes. And uh, we had to start uh, uh, thinking uh, what we can do. But mm -hmm. we were so fortunate mm. that we had become so innovative and so uh, uh, clever in our ways to keep Mokolodi afloat, mm. which was a charitable organization, mm. that when we decided now to go out in the world and venture into something as a business for ourselves, we were well equipped mm. and mm. we were well trained and we were well groomed. So it offered you some good training so, ground. So it offered us. And we went mm. into the, the mm. world, scared as hell, both mm. of us. Um, we didn't know, you know, the, the first tank of fuel that I put in my car, it was the first tank that I'd ever put from my own pocket. I'd always really? Been, yeah, I'd always been at a company, <laughs> stop at the pumps, put the petrol. Mm. Gas is there, electricity is there. Mm, mm. When I drove out of Mukolodi and I drove with my family and I had to stop at the garage and put 230 puller, I nearly died. <laughs> <laughs> and from I, your own pocket. From my own pocket and I wondered where I'm going to do that tomorrow again, how? Hey. And uh, uh, it was scary, <laughs> very scary, very yes. scary. Yes. But at the same time, it shook us awake mm. to say, Listen, you are going to have to put another tank. Mm. So what are you going to do about it? Mm. You know, and, and, and that started us. Mm. And, and we had the fire and we started. 
How did you start? I mean, with what did you start? Well, I was fortunate also. Uh, my father was in the feed business. So he had, uh, uh, I'd grown up in that environment. Mm -hmm. So my, he, he, he first worked for many years at Ipol, so he was a director there. Ipol, the manufacturer pet food. Yes, mm. and, and, and animal feeds. And, mm. and again, also inspirational, going on Saturday with my father and he was the managing director. I always looked up to him and thought one day I would be able to <laughs> park my car in a car pot. <laughs> like of, he does. Of, of, yeah, and, mm. but the way he ran things, and the mm. way he handled challenges and the, the way... You know, he always taught us, every morning you wake up, there will be stress mm. and there will be a monster at the door. The secret is how are you going to handle it? How are you going to... It's not a question, it's a promise. It's a promise. So, yeah. uh, so, so he, he, he inculcated that in you. He, yes. There's always a yeah. monster at the door. There's a monster at the door. When you open your eyes, there will be a challenge. Mm. And there will be something, but it's how you handle it. Mm. And, and that will be your success. So that's how I learned. And... Um, uh, so being in that environment, also at Mokolodi, over the years we had uh, bought lesson from uh, uh, suppliers in South Africa for the rhinos mm -hmm. during winter and whatever. So I had developed little bits of friendships. Of and contacts. And contact. Mm. And then I slowly uh, started mm. to, to, to go back and source those products. Mm. For so it's like it's like a network you yeah, had built yeah, already for, for, for needy needy farmers mm. and uh, then uh, my turning point also was the day that I decided this big move to go to 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 start a business and I think this is a secret for for a lot of entrepreneurs that are thinking and wondering how can they just do it mm. you need to find that uh, that mentor and, and 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 I remember clearly going to Mr. Satar Dada's office mm -hmm. and to his son, Yosef Dada. And I told uh, Mr. Right at Motor Center. Right at Motor Center, in the old Motor Center. Yes. It was still here in, it, uh, yeah. in the uh, in old Drive, Road. Yeah. The old Labachi Road. Mm. And I went there and I told uh, Mr. Yosef Dada, I, I, I want to open the shop, man. I want to, but what do you think? Because I'm scared, man. I'm even mm. shaking as I speak to you. <laughs> how, how did you do it? Mm. How does one do it? He said, he looked at me and he said, Neil, open your shop, they will come. Believe in yourself, open your shop, and they will come. Mm. And uh, That was his advice. Yeah, that was his advice. And, and he told me, be a man. Mm. Be strong. Believe in, in yourself. Believe in your dream. And, uh, and again, going back to my father... The, the, the policies that we were taught, honesty, mm. integrity, and be humble. Mm. And today, I still practice those. Honesty, integrity, and humbleness. Be humble. Mm. Be humble at all times. Mm. And remember... Humility, they call yes, it. Yes, remember whoever you are talking to and whoever is coming into your shop or to you, you do not know what that man is dealing with. You have to treat that man with uh, the highest respect. Mm. and that he may be dealing with with something very very Extreme. heartbreaking mm. or, or, or serious mm. or, or happy so you never take a person mm. Mm. Uh, in in your mood so after getting advice from uh, mr dada what happened after that uh, i i slowly uh, started uh, developing uh, the contacts bringing in the the feed slowly mm -hmm. keeping it in a garage and selling it slowly from home yeah Mm. And uh, we made um, contacts. Uh, there was no social media then. So no how social did, how, media. How did you get people to know about? No it? social media. No. I'll tell you a, a, quite a, a lovely story. Mr. Dara also uh, supported me on one of his chicken farms. He allowed me to buy some of his birds that were old mm -hmm. and or were ready, were finished laying mm -hmm. and ready for. So he gave me a little gap. Mm. A, little, a little boost starter mm. and told me that uh, I could partake in that so long as that you share it with everybody mm -hmm. and you make sure that you uh, support all the Mosadi Moholus who are selling those small chickens. Mm -hmm. So you, I want you to play the role of distributing mm -hmm. and transporting and make sure and we do that still today. Mm -hmm. But we started with a small broken truck. We drove through the village. We hooted, peep, peep, 
Nobody came. <laughs> Nobody even wanted to know. We had the chickens on the back of the truck. Nobody wanted to know. Mm. One day, there was a... Uh, just outside... Which village the, is this? Mongkhodi. Mongkhodi. Mongkhodi, okay. Yes, and Tamaha. Yes. So, we were coming uh, on our way back home one day. And uh, the hooter of the truck was not working. Mm. And we knew there's a, a roadblock ahead one of the permanent police roadblocks and we were going to get caught and we knew we never had even money because mm. we knew we were going to push that hit. <laughs> yeah. So we scrounged around in the village and we found a small spare shop and we went into that spare shop and we asked them, listen, we need a hooter because our hooter's packed up mm. and we know we're coming. So the guy there in the shop, it was a real small, you know, <laughs> one of those, uh, you can get anything little what do shop <laughs> yeah, and the guy scratched that. He said, a hooter. <laughs> yes. A hooter for a truck. <laughs> yes. And he scratched amongst all the bicycle tubes and pumps and what eventually came out with a little hooter type thing. But this hooter played a melody. Mm -hmm. He played a, song, a tune. Mm -hmm. And he said he had it there for the last 10 years. Nobody bought Nobody it. Nobody wanted it. It came from China and it was just a gimmick that he thought. So we said, well, we better take it because it's all we have. Mm -hmm. And we, it was easy. We connected the positive to the negative, put a piece of wire there, and there we went and we pushed the at the roadblock. And of course, the police just shook their head and said, um, what are you guys doing? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, they, they agreed and they told us we should replace it. But the next day, mm. we went through that village and we still had the same melody Uta. Mm. Mm. And we pushed it for whatever. Mm. And all the people started coming out of the houses to see what is this. Yeah. And then they realized, you have chicken. Uh -huh. ah, and then we were the chicken truck. We so all along with the hooter, they were ignoring you? They were ignoring us. They were thinking, which guys got the, the rudeness to just hoot you all day. <laughs> and then when we played the melody, yeah. it was great. It was fun. Wow. And then everybody learned that, that melody. So mm -hmm. when we played it, dum 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 uh, everybody came out the house yeah. and said, "Okay, Neil is here with these chickens." Yeah. yeah so uh, it just. So you should turn, come. Yeah. You come with a truck full of chicken. You leave with nothing. And we left with nothing. Yeah. Uh, and uh, and that's it. Kept, it went on for how long? To this day. Uh, to this day, we still and uh, now now we do it more professionally, more better. Times have changed a bit. Yeah. Uh, we couldn't carry the cash with us. Anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but we still do it today. And mm. we still wholeheartedly mm. support a whole network of, of, of traders. Mm -hmm. so, so, so we help them to bring it to their doorsteps. Talk door to steps. me about the name of the company and what inspired it and what it does exactly. Uh, the company that we currently, yes. uh, Nils Feed, Feed and Fodder. Yes. Um, to me, it just rang, it rang a bell because people started to learn my name. Mm. Nils. Mm -hmm. They call me not Neil, Nils. I don't know why, but... They put an S. They like the S. And yeah. They just said Nils. Mm. And, um, and then uh, people would phone me for solution. And ever since I've been a young guy, that's, that's something I've proud myself on, to find the solution. So I've been that type of guy. If you need to find that pen, mm. uh, I'm, the I'm the type of guy that will phone it. Mm. So eventually it became Nils. Uh, I need this. Nils, I... You know, we need that. Do you mm. think you could find it? Mm. And and it was happy for me mm. to go to Joburg and find it, yes. look for it. And, mm. and like you've seen on a lot of your podcasts, that's what makes a lot of entrepreneurs happy is, is mm. to, to be happy in mm. what you're doing. Yeah, the challenge. And yeah. the, never to make money. I never mm. opened the business to make money. Mm. I, I do it because it, it makes me feel yeah. nice to... to, to to make solution. Exactly what I what what yeah. feed are you distributing now? Uh, we distribute uh, poultry feed uh, throughout the country through from nutri feeds. I bring in. Uh, we pride ourselves on all the horse owners and the horse racing fraternity. We bring in all the products that they need. Mm -hmm. We have um, secured uh, farms that grow the best quality grass without fertilizers without chemicals for the horses you call them what free range no no it's an aerogrostis grass in big rolls oh and most of the in fact all the horse owners uh, they cherish that grass because it's 
It's pure. Yeah, it is pure because the farms that I eventually made contacts with, they grow for the race course. Mm -hmm. And the race courses in South Africa have a very strict mm. rules against any fertilizer, mm -hmm. any foreign uh, products in there. Is there so, a strong racing uh, community in Botswana? Very strong racing community. Tell me about it. Yeah, I don't know anything. And, 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 and it's just, look, it was very badly hurt with COVID. Mm. Um, but yeah, the guys are, are going for it. And it's beautiful. They've built a beautiful track here in Sibili. Mm. Um, they're really pushing. They've brought some of the real impressive mm -hmm. stock from South Africa. And I think it's a sport that's going to eventually... Yeah take off and 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 i'm there for them and they mm. know that and uh, we find solution yeah. yeah let's talk about the transition for you from sa to botswana uh, how easy or how traumatic was it initially it was traumatic because uh, i find myself uh, not really uh, partaking or enjoying and supporting the apartheid uh, era it, it 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 hurt me it never built i couldn't understand mm, the system there in south africa yes and and then we were forced as as young men to go to military we were forced to yeah to, they called it conscription yes it, it was something that you when you finish the day the dot of school the trucks were there to fetch you mm. and they installed all that stuff in us and we didn't I also came from a family that never really supported or believed in it. It wasn't a household mm. subject around our fireplace. No, no. It was, and then my inquisitiveness was that 400 kilometers from my house, it wasn't, yeah, mm. in this country. Mm. How can that be? Mm. So I came to see for myself. You came to Khaburoni? I came to Khaburoni to see for myself how can it be possible. Mm. And yeah, it was scary and people... In South Africa, told me I'm gonna die. You can go there and live amongst uh, the people there in Botswana. You're gonna die, man. <laughs> you need to stay here where you are protected, and this is ours. And uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. You're gonna go live in the middle of. Because this was what in the 80s. Yeah, uh, 90s, 90s. In 90s. the 90s. You're gonna go live in the middle of Botswana. You, 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 there's not a station there. Mm. What are you gonna do? Mm. You you must be crazy. Yeah. And again, my father always said, don't let another man's fear predict your your life mm. your future mm. if you feel in your gut you want to do that even them mm. even my father and mother you know but they always knew they will never hold me back mm. even today when i ask my father how did you what did you and mom do when you were lying in the bed thinking your son is going to Botswana? my father said there's nothing i can do with that boy he's mm. gonna do what he wants to do yeah leave him and my father always did that mm. Many things I've done in my life, I've asked my father now, my father 76, I've asked him, how did you allow me to do those things? Yeah, he said, yeah. well, we knew, you're not <laughs> going to listen. You're going to do what you want. So, yeah. so yes, we came mm. and uh, it was a very big transition. It was very uh, scary and... and but I had the blessing of mm. being with... You already uh, had secured a job with uh, yes, Mokolodi then? Yes, and I had the beauty of being with Bia Puso, who was... Uh, 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 icon mm. for 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 Botswana mm. uh, young man okay. and 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 that's where I was fortunate to mm -hmm. to just get uh, you know yeah you mentioned one mentor or two as in uh, Dada and to some extent Mr. Kebby any other mentors yeah I, and your dad I've yeah. I've been so blessed to 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 have open door policies with with mentors here in Botswana that it's it's Sometimes I, I don't understand now, but I think it's from attitude, mm -hmm. it's from persistence, mm. and it's from making yourself be liked mm. and, and respected and trusted. So Mr. Dara played a big role in my life. Mr. Yusuf Dara played a big role. Uh, till today, Judge Kirby plays a very big role. He's a very inspirational. Mm. I bounce all my ideas with him. Of him yeah. mm. he's, he's the one who takes my negatives and turns them into a positive. If I bounce a, a negative, you will always yeah, see yeah. the positive. And uh, he's, he's one of the smartest legal brains we ever had. Yes, if and you read his judgments. Oof. Correct. And many, many mm. uh, high legal guys in Botswana mm. have said, Neil, you mm. don't realize how blessed you are to have the privilege and access mm. 
to, to that man. Yes, he's, he's, in legal you know. circles, he's a quote-unquote demigod. Yeah, so, yeah. So, so, I mean, that, that's great. And then Mr. Ram recently, mm. uh, we, are, we are interacting and he's a great inspiration. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Mr. Angle Boxelsmith from Warwick, mm. another great uh, inspiration. Yeah. Um, and, and a lot of, uh, of the Indian business community uh, people, Umar Ali from Landmark, all these guys, somehow I'm blessed to be able to bounce ideas and negatives and positives on, on, mm. on these guys and they, they just got the will to pick me up yeah, all the time. Yeah. Yeah. Let's talk about the, the anim, animal feed industry. How challenging is it and how do you handle those challenges? Look, it's very challenging. In the earlier days, uh, we were very few of us. Mm. Um, it's now become quite saturated, if you ask me. There are very many mm. uh, animal feed business on every corner. And everybody's trying it mm. because it looks like a, a, a very lucrative business. However, the margins are very low. Um, but we pride ourselves eventually on service, courtesy. We teach and we preach to ourselves and our staff that if somebody walks through our door, he has passed three shops to come into our shop. Mm. So he should be treated that way. He should be appreciated that way. So my staff, myself, if somebody walks into our shop nowadays, um, we we blessed. Mm. We feel that he has passed three shops to come to us. Wow. And we need to acknowledge that. Mm. And if a person spends money in our shop, we need to know he needs to know that we know, you know. Mm. Earlier days we were a little bit uh, Relaxed. sure of ourselves. Mm. You know? Ladies hit the trail while they're looking at uh, take the money and the customer goes. Yeah, yeah. It's not like that anymore. The yeah. customer comes in, he's king, mm. his boss, and he, he paid our salary today. Yeah. Let's talk about COVID-19, um, positives and negatives for the business and for you. Uh, COVID-19 was the biggest lesson in my life that I, I want to carry over to any young entrepreneur and anybody else that's running businesses because especially small businesses. Mm. Us who run small businesses, we want to be the boss, we want to do everything, mm. we want to make every decision because we're the boss and mm. it's our little business and mm. we go, we say what goes. Mm. Let me tell you, when COVID hit uh, and they did this, um, story where you had to stay at home and except for so-called essential workers yeah. essential workers but you were only allowed a certain percentage of workers mm. okay and there did i see the loyalty of mm. some of my people that went while we were all fearing this dreaded disease mm. and going to die we we're all sitting in our safe havens <laughs> some of my staff chose to volunteer to say i'm going mm. to keep this shop open I saw that, mm. I learned loyalty and I learned uh, commitment commitment, and, 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 and things that I never thought. Mm. You know, I thought I'm the, the superman mm. of, the, of the business, but mm. I wasn't. The day, when the day when it came, there were other supermans mm. in my business. Mm. And then uh, we tried by all means to orchestrate and control that thing over the phone, only to realize slowly but surely my staff were more than capable, the more load and the more work and the more responsible they got, the more I learned my staff are capable to run that business. Mm. And today they're on their way to own that business of mine. I, wow. want, them, I want them to own it one day because mm. they, they're more than capable. Mm. It's, us, it's, it's us businessmen. So COVID-19 uh, COVID opened your eyes to this opened reality? Opened my eyes. Mm. Opened open my eyes. Okay, look, with all due respect, we did stress also. Mm. And as management and owners, we did have to jump very big hurdles mm. to keep ourselves open, to, to, to fill in the forms, mm. to make ourselves essentially mm. recognized, to get our trucks to the border. Mm. I mean, and then, and then we had frontline workers. You, you call nurses and doctors and all of that frontline workers. Mm. What about our poor truck drivers? <laughs> Those were real frontline Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. they were in there. Yeah. They Those border the, queues. Right in the front. They were frontline. <laughs> yeah. And listen, they worked for me, man. Mm. They, they never missed a, a beat. 
mm-hmm. and they pull those through and and that's why today I've got a different outlook and I've got a, a, a complete uh, new strategy for mm. for the people that have worked for me okay yeah. I happen to know that you are a permanent resident for this country yes um, why not citizenship I tell you it's time mm. for citizenship Mm-hmm. It's only that I've been comfortable that the powers that may be and the the laws who scrutinized me in the very beginning granted me the permanent residence. And I've always thought, well, that was well achieved. Mm. And I didn't want to be greedy or think myself big and say, well, then in that case, give me citizenship. Yeah. So so it's it's just like... being humble that so you thought it was a transitional point it's a, a transitional job. point and i think now that you've asked that it, it's 25 years it's probably time to mm. say yeah till uh, death do we part <laughs> yeah. uh, in sickness and in health in, yeah um, because everything of mine is here mm. and and my children have grown up here they only know what's mm. and they don't know of any issues mm-hmm. uh, they talk continuing yeah. in other countries they they, they but one is they are even now that they excelling in sports and and so forth uh, they want to represent Botswana because what, what sport are they involved in swimming and the other one is in in running mm-hmm. and horse riding mm. and and uh, they can't do it because uh, they're not citizens yeah and they're asking me but that we don't understand mm. we're Botswana we're mm. born here we're Botswana mm. we don't know anything else yeah we go to visit grandpa and mm. granny sometimes yeah and then we come home so mm. what are you telling us yeah so it's a it's a lax on my mm. side mm. i mean it's time that i should go and say uh, i want to be here. and yeah. i think i think it's time and i've yeah. behaved myself yeah i know I've, I've good luck to you with that but, we, but we, yeah when when i received that i thought that was privilege enough mm. and that i should be humble and thankful yeah and not just start to say well now i'm a citizen yeah so but i think now so you can start the process perhaps. i think so i think yeah. it's time and i think the country uh i think i play a role now yeah i see that as you said you sell you sell animal feed what about farming because you sell to farmers what about involving yourself in farming yourself is it something you're interested in very much very mm-hmm. much um especially vegetable i've been experimenting with vegetables now mm. um mr ram is always indicating that he would love me to 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 do a little something mm-hmm. uh with him um so yeah I'm, 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 but i'm doing my homework also first i've mm. learned to to do my homework and not just go out and think i can buy a pack of seeds and grow it, mm. anything mm. so i've got a lot of test plots where i am now mm. i've 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 worked with hydroponics now i've mm-hmm. worked with aquaponics um in different species yeah so i'm doing my homework yeah and and farming mm. if you ask me that question i mm. think yeah that's yeah that's it's a, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, so it might be in the in the foreseeable future absolutely okay. yeah all right yeah. so if a, a youngster was going to approach you and say look i want to be an entrepreneur mm. you're an entrepreneur you are seasoned you've seen it all Yeah. What would be are the would you say are the essential traits or essential characteristics? Mm. If you can dream it, you can possibly do it. If you can dream it, I think you can do it. Mm. If you can see yourself doing that. Don't 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 think of what other people are doing. Mm. Think see your what you see yourself being able to do, you can probably do. Mm. Um take the golden opportunity of the social networking and uh, net uh, social YouTube media mm. and social media that we have now when we were there we never had that we had to walk the streets knock the doors big borrow yes it was good for us it both carried uh, taught us to talk to other adults it mm. talked uh, taught us to approach but today if i want to learn how to to make a, an animal feed mm. i don't have to go to do a bachelor's degree in feed science and the next thing i can go on the internet and find recipes youtube yes yeah, i can go to youtube and i can teach myself mm. so i'm saying youngsters you've got you've got no excuse mm. you've got to go, if you want to learn how to do a steak cook a steak properly mm. go and go and youtube there's uh, 20 the university of youtube university of youtube use mm. it mm. use it to your to your ability mm. but at the same time also work on your skills don't be scared of of mm. other adults and if you want good advice if you want good advice 
ask an older man mm. or an older lady. That, that, that's your secret. Mm. If you want good advice, ask an older person. Because there's a tendency to ask their peers. And to ask their, their peers. And the, the danger with that, we all have different fears. Mm. Uh, I remember when I was young and I said I'm going to buy a truck and go, everybody said, oh, you, uh, you're going to get killed and you're going to mm. lose your money and uh, it's going to cost you too much. And, mm. but, but I pursued, you know, people stand around the fire and they, they will scare you. Yeah, uh, <laughs> that's uh, true. Never be scared of what you think. And if your gut is telling you it can work, it probably can. Mm. Mm. Probably, but don't... Don't base other people's fears on you. Yeah. And don't always look outside and everywhere else. Mm. And hope that, why can't I be like that and be like that? Just be like, like me, we are small business and I'm happy with that. Because I think that's what God has, mm. has, has blessed me with. And He knows that's what I'm capable of. Mm. Said, well, yeah, I see the setup there. It's a warehouse in the, in the um, industrial site, that site. So... Yeah. Um, it's quite large. Uh, is, it, is it a challenge to manage that in terms of, from the point of view of security and so on and so forth? It's a very big challenge for security. I mean, uh, uh, we do have, the, the threats are increasing on our equipment and mm. batteries and trucks and tires get mm. stolen from time to time. Mm. But uh, the cooperation from the police is always there and it's mm. always strong and it's always... That's the beauty of, of, of our area still. Mm. If something happens, it's big news. Yeah. And it gets attended to. It's mm. not something that just goes by the wayside. Yeah. Battery yeah. stolen, everybody knows about it. And the police, uh, they, they yeah, are vigilant. Us. They're vigilant, yeah. Mm, mm. Um, so, but, but we're not immune to, mm. to any of it. Um, yeah, one of my, my companies there is uh, sanitation. So we... Mm. we with trucks and what we found over the last, whether as a result of COVID or maybe the war in Ukraine, we don't know. Yeah. The cost of spares has gone up exponentially. Yeah, cost of fuel. Things, things in the last 12 yeah. months have just gone yeah. crazy. Yeah. How are you coping with all that? We're battling. The, the, the cost of fuel, the cost to service a Scania truck now is no less than 30,000. Exactly. You know, the invoice is 30,000. Mm. Uh, when you phone and try to negotiate to, to negotiate or query, you get told that you've got a superior product and you should just relax. Mm. Um, maybe I, I, I can't say that, but I can because it's the truth. And, mm. and the cost of fuel, I mean, you, you fill a tank, you, you're in for 10 grand. Mm. So, you know, it's a 10 grand, 10 grand, 10 grand. Mm. Then a service for 30 grand. Mm. Then a tire goes, a tire now is four and a half thousand. Mm. And then you're selling a bag of chicken food for 225 <laughs> bucks and you're making a 5% profit. To, mm. to keep it all afloat is mm. it's not easy. And so, so when you ask me that question, mm. those expenses have become huge. Yeah, a big chunk to bite now. Mm, mm. Whereas we used to be able to, to call them part of the, the injury. Yeah. But now they're almost like uh, mm, they just an assault. Take, yeah, it's an assault now. Yeah. Uh, it's an assault. But, but then again, now you have to be innovative, mm. more serious, cutting your costs more and more. Mm. That light that's been burning there all week shouldn't burn anymore. Take mm. the globe out. Mm. It's not even doing anything. Yes. Which toilets are leaking? Which uh, uh, which we should have been doing anyway, but you know, you get complacent yeah, yeah. like anybody else. Mm. And you walk past these things. Mm. But now you have to start counting the pennies. Mm. Now you have to start encouraging the, the drivers even more. Please, guys, we can't hit the pavement with a tire. We can't hit the way bridge. Mm. If you are not comfortable to go in there, tell that customer, I'm not, I can't. Mm. I, I can't go in. Yeah, so it's too risky. It's too risky. I might slice a tire. Yeah. Mm. How can we do it? So we've got to be more and more, yeah, more proactive. Proactive, cautious. Mm. Lock our things away. Mm. It must also be, you know, you can't cry when your things yeah. are lying all over the place. You yeah. have to look after your stuff. In a sense, it seems as if we're having what is known as the after effects of COVID. Yes. When it's really hitting hard now. Yes. When we're coming out of COVID, now we feel the after effects. Yes. What, what, is, what is, I'm not asking you to predict, but I'm, I'm just asking you to tell me how the future looks like from a business standpoint and from an entrepreneur standpoint. Yeah, look, 
So I'm a pilot, I studied the Newton's law. Whatever goes up is going to come down. Or it goes down, must come up. Yeah. Somehow, somehow. But yeah. look, it's not going to be easy. And I'll tell you why. And it makes me scared most mornings when I drink my coffee thinking of my business and life. Because I drink a coffee in the morning and I think, ah, I haven't seen that customer for a while. Mm. And then I phone. Yeah. And I say, well, I haven't seen you for a while. He said, Neil. Hey, you know, I had to get rid of my goats. I had to sell my goats? I had to sell my goats over COVID. I just can't. Mm. I have, uh, uh, I sell a lot of dog food. I have a very nice brand and an agency. Mm. A lot of owners have said, we had five dogs on the farm, now we have two. Because it, it doesn't make economical sense. Mm. Do, we, do we service our expenses at home first and mm. then the dogs? Or mm. So we... Then you have farmers that, that, you know, when times are good, you go and buy a nice bull. <laughs> yeah. You're excited. Now mm. you're a little bit cautious. Mm. Do we hold our cases? Because a bull is 100,000, isn't it? Yeah. These days. So, so, whereas some, before COVID, it was exciting times. Guys were comfortable, mm. confident to go and do that. Mm. Now, guys are a little bit reluctant to say, let us just, we're just waiting yeah. to check how this thing pans out, the, mm. the wall. There, there, there are two schools of thought that I've come across. So, there, there's a group that is very excited. 2023, big turnaround, everything yes. will come up. And yes. then there's f another 50% who says, gloom, doom is going to get worse. Third world war, it's going to be done. Yeah. I wonder which school of thought you belong to. I, I'm always optimistic and I'm always positive, but I'm also cautious. Mm -hmm. And when I say cautious, I think I'm also do a lot of what my customers are saying on just holding on to my savings, mm. holding on to my cash, holding on to things for the pure benefit of the survival of my family, mm. just to make sure that everybody's going to be okay. Mm. So. Do we go on a holiday? Maybe not. Mm. You know, do we redo that car's engine just because, or do we just wait till next year? Mm. Um, so it's a bit of cautious, but doom and gloom is also very dangerous. Yeah. You know, and that's why I don't stand around any fireplaces with doom and gloom people. <laughs> yeah, I, it's, you walk away. Yeah, you find uh, people, uh, they blame everything on uh, politics. Government, yeah, president, everybody. Africa, yeah. Ukraine and the bomb. And, uh, and, and you'll find you go home and you... You're you, terrible your after those people. Is, you close down. Mm -hmm. So I don't, I don't surround myself with yeah. negative... Things. Which is why I want you to speak a little bit about the attitude of persistence, the attitude of grit. How important is that trait in business? It's very important and it can get you down and it can be tiring. Don't think that us who own a small business are immune to defeat and immune to, to uh, hurdles and back steps. Uh, we get it all the time. Mm. It's just how we get back up from it, how we dust ourselves and say, let's carry on. And we must never lose faith. Faith is probably one of the key factors that have saved me many times. Mm -hmm. To say, for everything that I'm complaining about, there are 2,000 people praying that they could have a business like mine, mm. or a life like mine, or even a car to drive to, to choppies instead of walking. Yeah. You know, when I see a man walking with a gas tank and two bags, and I think, Mm. That's the man who's praying if he could only just have a moped. Mm. 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 So, so how big are my problems? They're mm. not big. So when you wake up and you think, oh, I've lost money and I've lost the client and uh, it's time we close this business, then, then, no. then I think to myself, you, you're ungrateful. Mm. You're blessed. Keep quiet and carry on uh, somehow. And I think some of us entrepreneurs and, and entrepreneurs who choose the fact that maybe the powers that may be, maybe <laughs> God chooses people like us mm. because we got that endurance. Mm. And through our endurance and our thought, our decision making every day, a lot of people uh, have, have can support to eat. their family yeah. and, mm. and go and buy pencils for the school and, and bags because mm. we took that pain. So take that pain and, and, and keep So when you're thinking keep of quitting, take that pain because you're pain. Pain. So, yeah. Take, take that pain because you, they, they, they are. Uh, 
numerous families. Numerous families relying on your 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 pain, yeah. and your decision making, and your endurance. Yeah, they unfortunately may not have that endurance. Mm, but mm. if you're the one that's that that does have it, mm. don't waste it and don't flaunt it. Yeah. Then you are ungrateful. Then you deserve your, your failure. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So there's an expression I want us to talk about, so, which you you wrote for me. What God meant for you, and God knows what you can handle. Can you simplify that expression and and and, and, and unpack it for me? Yeah, I, I believe uh, God gives you what you can handle. Mm. He gives you what you can handle. So I'm, uh, He knows I can't run 137 feet stores. Mm. He knows I can run one or two, and He knows I can do them well, and He knows that. Those many people will survive off of mm. of that, mm. and and I must be happy with it. Mm. But if I keep sitting and thinking, why don't I have fifty shops and what's mm. wrong with me and what what, uh, it's just an ungrateful thing. And mm. I think God, He will give you what you can handle, mm. and if you accept that, and you make the best of it, no matter if it's small or big, mm. then then you'll you'll be fine. You'll do well. The youngsters always ask me to ask this question to my guests. I'm going to put it to you. Is there zaga? Is there money in this industry you are in? Is there potential for tremendous wealth? If you if you go into being an entrepreneur and you're going to do business for money, you will never succeed. You'll never make it. It's not for money. Explain. You have to choose what you want to do in life because you love it and you enjoy it and you want to wake up every morning. In fact, the minute you know that you are sad that the, it became night, the day is finished, I, I still want to do more. Mm. And you can't wait for tomorrow the sun to come up so that you can go again back to, to your place of happiness. Mm. Then you're in the right game. Mm -hmm. If you're going... Uh, if you're going to it for a job or you're going to pay the bills or whatever, you're going to have a, a hard life, a sad mm. life. Is there Zucks? Everybody wants Zucks. Everybody mm. wants a nice car and a nice clothes and a nice, uh, take their family on a nice holiday and whatever. But if you're going to go into business or whatever for Zucks mm. and for money, I think you're going to find you're going to fail at it because mm. uh, if that's your main focus, mm -hmm. It's not going to work. Your main focus has got to go to something that you love, mm -hmm. something that you know you can make a difference, and something that you get such pleasure mm. in making that difference. Mm -hmm. The Zucks will come by themselves. Mm -hmm. will, you will be rewarded. The Zucks is like a bonus. It, it will come mm. because it's an happy environment, because it's doing everything right. It's a, it's, it's a happy place. That mm. vibe will come come by itself. And then what you do with that Zucks again is a, is, mm. is important. Yeah, I've seen many people achieve, and uh, get 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 good luck, tenders and things and things, and and the money is, is it's blown away. It's blown no away, time. and then the whole thing dies. Mm. But you see the people that are happy mm. and are excited in doing what they're doing. The Zucks are the last thing on their mind. Mm. It, it comes to them. It mm. comes rewarded. But mm. don't uh, don't get me wrong. Mm. We do. We need money. We need <laughs> we money to survive. <laughs> I mean, we need to do the things we do. See, to the youngsters, that seems contradictory. We need the money on the one hand, but money should not be the motivator. So to some, it seems a bit of a conflict. Yeah, it depends what you need that money for. Do you need that money to buy Mercedes to... Uh, make a noise with exhausts and impress mm. or do mm. you need the money to further yourself better? Yeah. Do you need the money to expand? Do you need... Um, um, and we've all been there. Mm. I've been young mm -hmm. and, 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 and done that. Yeah. I've bought uh, fancy cars and I've played yeah. and I've enjoyed myself and, and there's nothing wrong with that. I think mm. it's, it's okay. Mm. Um, but uh, slowly as you get older, you start realizing what, what yeah, what's important, what's important and mm. what you need to start um, yeah. putting away. All right. As we come to the close of our conversation, I'm really keen to know the future for you in terms of if you're looking 10, 15 years, um, is there 
is there an end goal or is there something that you see in your crystal ball when you look into the future yeah look i've got a, a few uh, projects in mind that 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 i'd like to do uh going in, in into my older years i would very much like to see my current staff um, and my staff have been with me for 25 years wow that's loyal uh, i don't have a staff turnover mm. we, we we don't know what staff conflict is mm. yes i'm small so i can say that and mm. it's easy but I learned very early in my life about the acacia tree. We sit under there and fix mm. the problem. Mm -hmm. And we've done that ever since. And, and um, the young lady that, that raised my children uh, is, in, in our house is, is today my senior, senior lady, Dolly Molefo, and she's been with me for odd 20 years. Mm. Ernest Mack, he, he was hired by me to, to help me build a, a driveway. He's today 25 years with me, mm. doing everything. Mm. Um, so, in my crystal ball, I'd like to see, I'd like to see them take over that business. Mm -hmm. I'd like to see myself starting to go into farming and a little bit of development. I'd like to see myself setting my children up, making sure that they're okay in this world. Are they interested? Not interested in taking over the business. The one is the one is very interested in. Mm. Uh, entrepreneurship and business mm. she she loves it mm. and the other one is is completely into the bush and mm -hmm. wildlife mm -hmm. so that's her dream mm. and uh, I will be able to 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 help them both but I think that's my biggest passion now mm. is to make sure the children of mine mm -hmm. are, are well prepared the way I was and I'm, I'm trying to give them all the opportunities mm. the, that I can but also uh, one must also realize the ceiling in a business. Mm -hmm. Business also has, has a spot where it reaches... If you, especially if you have no plans to, for growth. Certain, for, for certain ceilings are imminent. That, that they are, that just is what it is. You can't yeah. put another shop. You can't, mm. you, can't, you, know, you can't sell another bag of feed in the same street. Yeah. So, so, so you just have to be happy with it. Yeah, yeah. But follow your gut and dream. What you dream is... Yeah probably what you can do. We've tried to stay positive throughout this interview, talking about what you should do, what you shouldn't do. From your experience, have you seen certain traits or certain specific activities from other businesses that you think we should avoid like a plague or certain behaviors that you maybe share with our audience? Um. Don'ts, as it were. Can we have been talking about do's. What are the don'ts? Look, I think there must be fair, fair game and fair trade. Um, we have to, we have to rule out uh, shortcuts that businesses are taking mm. um, to advance on top of you or over you. Mm. It must be fair game, and and the laws are there, and the the the, the but but you know, there's ways. Mm where things slide through the, through the system and I wish that those would mm. would stop that we would have fair game because um, you know there you, you can see some some way some th are you talking about corruption I think so yes because you can see uh, somehow somehow products come into the country that you know fair and well are not supposed to be here so how, how is that happening and why mm. And, and that hurts you because you're following the rules, you're doing your things properly, yet you've been overtaken by not f straight competition, mm. by unfair competition. Mm. And, and, and those are hurtful. But again, we, we try to say, as long as our nose is clean and we know what we're doing, we mm. will be okay. Yeah, eventually. And, and let, us con let us take the ID. Because mm. one day is one day, uh, maybe that, will be exposed and they will be exposed for you. Yeah, 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 yeah. So you should never ever try to mm. join that. You should never ever try to um, influence it mm. or support it. Uh, because when my red truck comes through the border, I want, like it is now, to everybody to say, ah, there's Neil's truck. Yeah, let him pass, ah, yeah. That is Neil. Yeah, yeah. We know Neil. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, there's many ways. Uh, that people take chances. Yes. But we don't want mm. to do that. Now, this is a chance for you to ask me a question 
say if you've got one for me? Yeah, my question to you would be, uh, how do you see the future, you being mm. prominent businessman? How do you, uh, and how do you take my interview? How do you think, am I on the right road? Mm. Because now you're another mentor for me, mm. because I know what you've achieved in your life. And from what I've told you now, uh, how do you see my road? Am I on the right road? Okay, or those are two the... questions. One is, is how do I see you in the interview? And secondly, how do I see the future? The first one, you've been a brilliant guest. You've you. uh, stayed positive and uh, you've, you've shared generously in terms of uh, what you believe. And that's what this show is about, to expose uh, entrepreneurs and to encourage youngsters out there to, to go out there and, 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 you know, and tackle the system for themselves. Yes. So that's number one. I'm happy with the interview. Number two, what's the future? Um, every time I have turned on CNN, there's breaking news. Yeah. And you listen to that news, it seems like it's the end of the world. Yes. And it's been going on all my life. So to the point where I decided I'm not watching the news. Yes. What I've noticed of the few times I watch the news is that they ratchet up a notch. Yes. Because for them to make money, they require my attention. Okay. The headlines that I pick in the, in the, in the supermarket, yes. they've, they've notched it up a notch. Okay. The headlines are getting scarier and messier and uglier. Okay. So in my own little mind, I have worked it out right. that the business of newspapers and the business of television is to petrify the hell out of us, right. to get us to part with our hard-earned cash to buy these things. Right. And I've discovered that 99% of the time when they preached gloom and doom, yes. it never turns out to be that way. Yes. So yes. although I know that some of it, for instance, even if you take one article and you read it, you'll see that it's only on page three or whatever that the truth actually comes out. The rest yeah. is just so-and-so said this or thought so-and-so said. It's never clear. Yes. As a lawyer, I can tell when it's hearsay and when it's direct evidence. Mm. So mm. based on these tools and my experience over the years, I've decided to remain positive. Okay. Social media has amplified it 10 times. Yes. So the tendency is to Start with there's a headline of you know, so and so did this, and then so and so not only did this but did it 20 times, and so and so is about to do it 100 times by the time okay. you read it. Yes, yes, yes. So, based on that, I've chosen to adopt a very positive outlook. Mm. And if, if it's time for things to go wrong, they'll go wrong if, mm. if God will allow it. So, I'm positive. I think okay. things are going to go up. We're on an upward trajectory. Yeah. Even some of the fears we had around COVID, we are now yeah. learning that a lot of it was exaggerated. Yes. It was, yes. after yes. all, just a stronger flu than normal. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so based on that, the only way I can answer your question is I'm positive. Mm. My, my outlook is, is, is on an upward trajectory. Oh, well, thank you very much for that, God. That's encouraging because mm. um, you do. You, you find yourself... Mm. at the bright place and it's doom and gloom. Yeah. The one is saying, ah, we need to leave. And, yeah. Uh, to get Be out of it's there. Better. Remember that even in the South African context, a lot of people left for New Zealand and yeah. Australia. They came back. They came back. Now they're thinking of going away again. So, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. yeah that, 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 that's something I learned as well, is, is, mm. is that uh, you cannot run away from mm. Mm. every time there's a scare. Yeah. So you have to work out your own philosophy and just handle it. Yeah, and handle it, yeah. yeah. Now, as we conclude Second. our conversation, that camera yes. is for you to take a quick look and leave the viewer with a positive, positive encouraging message as we wrap up. Sure. Mm. So I'd like to say, if you can uh, dream it, you can probably do it. And most importantly, don't ever lose your faith along the road. Keep your faith as strong as possible. Believe that you are blessed and believe in yourself. And uh, you will definitely achieve those things that you are dreaming of. Thank, thank you, you so much. much. And thank you so much for having me. I really yeah. appreciate it. What you can do before we is just to share your contacts and where you're operating from 
for the benefit of the viewer. Okay. Um, yeah, so I'm in Khabaroni Waste Industrial, plot 22112. Um, uh, our number is 391-3664. Uh, Niels Feed and Fodder, there's a nice big chicken outside mm. uh, on a pole, so that's our sort of icon. Mm. And uh, people know it as that. And um, yeah, we we would love to see you there, and we'd love to to hear what we can do for you, what we can solve for you. Any contacts on social media or WhatsApp or anything like that? Uh, no, not at the, the moment. No. Not at the moment. Okay. No. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Cheers. All right. Mm. Cheers.